the appointee, Mr. Jesus S. Cepeda, elected officials, dignitaries, and members of the general public. Before we proceed forward with this public hearing, let me first introduce the members of this committee. To my immediate right is the vice chairman of this committee, Senator Victor Hokkuk from the island of Rhoda. And to my right side of the aisle is the floor leader of the Senate, Senator Vinny Sablon from the island of Saipan. And to my left side of the aisle is the vice president of the Senate, Senator Ustu Kiduga from the island of Saipan. And I'm the chairman of this committee, Senator Francisco Q. Cruz from the island of Tinian. I would also like to announce a couple of things. In the interest of informational purposes regarding code of conduct during this public hearing. Today, the members of this standing committee are conducting a public hearing on the appointment of Mr. Jesus S. Cepeda to serve as a member of the Commonwealth Election Commission to represent the island of Saipan. The public will be invited to make comments as to whether you support or oppose the, appoint the appointee before us this morning. We value your input. However, any comments beyond the facts of the appointee or comments that are not directly related with this public hearing will not be entertained. And such comment will be removed from the record. At the same time, please observe minimal noises in disrupting this hearing process. Please turn your electronic to a silent mode. Thank you. Let us now begin. This public hearing is now in session. Today is May 23rd, 2022, at approximately 10.05 in the morning here in the Senate Chamber, Capitol Hill, Saipan. This is a public hearing regarding the appointment of Mr. Sus Espeda by Governor Roth, the longer Tories to serve as a member of the Commonwealth Election Commission to represent the island of Saipan, pursuant to 1 CMC, subsection 6102. Ms. Jolene Tagabell will be our clerk for this uh, hearing. Mr. John Santos will be our Sergeant at Arm, and Mr. Kamatsu will be our IT. And Mr. Joe Bermudis will be our Council uh, and will all serve uh, for this hearing accordingly. At this time, I'd like to ask uh, Ms. Tagaba to please call the roll. Senator Francisco Q. Cruz. Here. Senator Victor B. Hoko. Senator Carl R. King Neighbors. Senator Husto S. Kirwa, Senator Vinny F. Sablon. Mr. Chairman, four members are present, one member is absent. Thank you. With our four members present, we have the necessary number to proceed with this public hearing. However, uh, Senator Carl King Neighbors from the island of Tinian is excused for this hearing. At this time, do I hear a motion for to adopt our agenda? Mr. Chairman, motion to adopt today's agenda. There's a motion and was seconded. All in favor of that motion say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carries. At this time, I'd like to ask uh, Sergeant on Arm to please escort the appointee and the governor's rep into the chamber. Thank you. And uh, before you uh, introduce the uh, committee uh, with the uh, governor's uh, appointee, please uh, state your name for the record. Thank you. With us, half a day and good morning, Chairman Cruz and the honorable members of this committee. For the record, my name is TJ DLC Magnolia, representative for the Office of the Governor. On behalf of Governor Ralph D.O.G. Torres, I thank you for the opportunity to come and testify you before you here today. I am here to introduce the governor's nominee for the Commonwealth Election Commission, Mr. Jesus S. Cepeda. Mr. Cepeda is a highly experienced individual who has dedicated his life to public service and public safety. In 1997, he began his career as a police officer for the Department of Public Safety and has since moved up the ranks, serving as a police sergeant from 2017 to 2020 
and currently serves as a police lieutenant to this present day. Serving his, in his capacity as a police officer, he is no stranger to enforcing the law and tackling any challenges that he is faced with, while also serving as a respected leader to his peers. Governor Torres places his full trust and confidence in Mr. Cepeda as a member of the Commonwealth Election Commission. I know he stands ready to answer your questions and present his plans for the future. His professional experience as a Department of Public Safety police officer, his credentials, and his commitment to serving the Commonwealth in this capacity make him a viable candidate, and we ask for your expeditious approval. Thank you, Sisus Masi, Zengiliso, for the opportunity to introduce him to this August body. Thank you again. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Monglone, for your testimony. And before I recognize the uh, appointee, uh, sir, uh, I would like to ask you to please uh, stand and raise your hand so that the, the clerk can administer you. Mr. Jesus S. Sepeda, you do solemnly swear under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you shall give in the matter at hand shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I swear. Thank you. Thank you. You may take your seat. Um, Mr. Sepeda, I know that you, uh, you have requ uh, submitted all requirements by this body, but if you have anything else that you wish to share with us, you have the floor, but please uh, state your name for the record. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for having me, uh, Mr. Chairman, Vice Chair, uh, Chairman members. My name is Jesus Santos Cepeda. I am a resident of uh, San Vicente here in Saipan, Chiramai. I've been a police officer for 26 years. This um, new assignment that I about my about to get into, if I do get uh, select, selected, is uh, pretty much new to me. I have very little experience. Uh, it's very different from the twenty six years that I've been working with as a police officer, but I will contribute my time now uphold and maintain the integrity of the election commission. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Cepeda. And before I open the floor for the members of the general public that are in the gallery uh, that we should come forward to deliver testimony, whether you're in support or not in support, you're free to come forward. But again, I would like to remind everyone that uh, any comment that is raised that are not related with this public hearing will not be entertained. And uh, such comment will be removed from the record. At this time, I open the floor for any members of the general public that are here in the gallery that wishes to deliver testimony, please. Uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, before I, I recognize, I would like to, I apologize. I would like to recognize first those entities that are that are requested to participate in this uh, hearing. Uh, first from the Honorable Mayor David M. Apatang. Any member of the mayor's office or clerk, do we have a letter of support from the mayor? Any, any staff that, that is here to Deliver testimony? No one? I'll let the record reflect that there's no one from the uh, Mayor's Office of uh, David Apetang. From the Honorable Mayor Vicente Santos of the Northern Island. Anyone from the Mayor's Office of Northern Island? No one? Let the record reflect that there's no one from Mayor, <coughs> excuse me, Vicente Santos of the Northern Island. The 16 Saipan and Northern Island Municipal Council. Anyone from that office? No one? Let the record reflect that there's no one from the 16 Saipan and Northern Island Municipal Council. The Chief Executive 
officer of the New Northern Marianas Technical Institute, na Ms. Jordina Ato. Oh, I apologize. I'm, I apologize. I apologize. I take those back. Clerk, please strike that out. Strike that out. All those that I mentioned, I authorize the clerk to strike it out. I was reading the wrong list. Uh, the executive director of the Commonwealth Election Commission, Ms. Kayla Igato, is she here? Can you please uh, come forward and uh, enter the chamber? Uh, you may proceed, but please uh, state your name for the record. Thank you. This one? Okay. Good morning, Chairman Cruz, a member of this committee. My name is Kayla S. Igitol, and I am the Executive Director <clears throat> for the Commonwealth Election Commission. On behalf of the CEC board and myself, we are in support of Governor Ralph DeLongro towards his nomination of Mr. Is Sue Cepeda to the CEC board. Currently, the CEC has five members, two members from the first senatorial district, one member from the second senatorial district, two members from the third senatorial district. The commission shall consist of nine members, <clears throat> but as I mentioned earlier, the commission only has five members. We have one vacancy for the second senatorial district and three vacancies for the third senatorial district. With the 2022 general election fast approaching, we would like for CC to be at its full capacity of nine members. We thank this committee in acting on Mr. Cepeda's nomination. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> if you said it, I apologize, but uh, your testimony today is it on your behalf or on behalf of the commission? Me, um, on my behalf and the commission, the thank, board thank members, you. yes. Thank you. Okay, so uh, any, any, your excuse, and any member of the Commonwealth Election Commission that is here? And any members of the commission? No one else besides the statement of this executive director. So let the record reflect that there's no one else from the election commission. At this time, I would like to open the floor for public comment. And again, I, I will repeat again that any comments that are raised by the members of the Republic that are not directly related with this public hearing will not be entertained. And before anyone uh, wishes to come forward and deliver testimony, please state your name for the record. Thank you. Public comment is now open. Anyone from the members of the general public that are here in the gallery wishes to come forward, you are welcome to come forward. Even members of the election commission or family members of the election, you're welcome to come forward. It's open. Floor is open. Anyone? Oh. Yeah. That's why we're we're doing this kind of process just to to see and and the members to evaluate how how the election commission also you know, feel of the the appointee or from the administration to represent in this capacity. So. Uh, we, because since we have, uh, I don't want to force you guys, but once we have some members of the of the uh, public that are here, uh, do I see any, or can the members in the gallery raise your hand if you're in support of this uh, appointee? We want to make sure because this is very this is very critical. This is election commission, and 
we want the members of the public that are watching uh, either Facebook or Tebu Tebu to believe that this body are making sure that uh, the general public are afforded the opportunity to deliver testimony. You may proceed, sir, but please state your name for the record. Robin N. Sablan. I'm here um, on behalf of myself and CEC in support of um, the uh, nom nominee from the governor. Um, it is it is really critical that we uh, have the full members of the commission in order for us to um, run the election, especially this year. Um, <clears throat> beginning September, that's when all the registration is closed and uh, petition are start coming in and we really need those to be certified in order for us to proceed forward. So I mean, I'm, I'm here in support of the nomination and, and I thank you for whatever decision that you guys will make today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blunt. Anyone else from the gallery? Once we we close public comment, we're not going to go back to public comment. So this is the opportunity. If no one else, I'm going to have to close public comment. Anyone else? No one else? At this time, public comment is now closed. And before I recognize the members of this body to raise questions in regards to today's uh, hearing, I would like to ask the uh, Ms. Dagobel to disclose all those letters, whether in support or not in support. Mr. Chairman, members of the Senate EAJ Committee, Mr. Zepeda, and members of the general public, in addition to the oral testimonies received today on the executive appointment of Mr. Jesus S. Zepeda to serve as a member of the Commonwealth Election Commission, please be advised that there are no letters submitted in support or in opposition of the appointee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Tagabel. At this time, I'd like to recognize the member of this body to raise questions and concerns. And now I'd like to recognize the floor leader of the Senate from the island of Saipan, Senator Vinny Sablon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning to everyone that's present here in your Senate chamber. Um, good morning to um, the representatives from the governor's office, the media, um, the family, and um, also our um, awesome team at the Commonwealth Election Commission. Thank you for taking the time to be here. Um, good morning, Mrs. Speda. <clears throat> um, first, I want to thank you for um, accepting the nomination <clears throat> by the governor to serve on this um, election board. I know in your testimony, um, you mentioned that <clears throat> um, these or the election laws and, and, and what's to come um, before you is new to you. <clears throat> and I'm sure you're going to um, learn a lot um, if you get the chance to serve. Um, we have about five months remaining, um, approximately five months remaining till um, our next general election. And there's going to be a lot of work, and there has been a lot of work that has been um, put forth by <clears throat> um, the director and her team. Um, I just want to, I won't have any questions as you, um, you're looking at being a, becoming a new member. Um, but I'd like to kind of just give some recommendations to um, make sure you use the references and um, the material that's available, the resources that's available for you to um, to bring yourself up to speed and to gain knowledge of, of the election commission and the duties, right? Um, and there's several things. The election law is, is one thing to <clears throat> um, dive into and um, um, gain some knowledge there. There's um, already some promulgated rules and regulations that have been set forth by um, previous board members and the administration or the administrative staff and director of the election commission. Um, there's manuals of procedures um, that take place in every election. So um, these are just some resources that you can look into <clears throat> um, to um, gain some knowledge of, of the task that's, that's ahead of you. Um, you do have um, five members that are that are <clears throat> um, in the board right now, and I'm sure that they could help you 
um, bring you up to speed. But most importantly, you have uh, Mrs. Yegito um, back there and her team to kind of <clears throat> um, drive you in the right direction and, and um, ensure that they, they have the information for you um, um, when you serve. Uh, there's there's a lot of things that go into to the election, and um, one of the most important things um, that I've seen um, that is very vital to <clears throat> um, to recognize is is the voter registration. Um, we always want to ensure that um, we get out and we we get all our our, our um, eligible voters <clears throat> um, to register and give them the information um, and dates so that they they know that so and one of the one of the the tasks of the the election commission um, is to go out and educate um, you know our community on on voting on the procedures and um, how to stay registered a lot of them don't know um, when they miss elections they have to re-register i think it's when you miss a general election um, you have to re-register um, I know there's some challenges with absentee voting, something maybe that um, I'd like for um, the board to look into, um, getting all those absentee votes in. Um, I went into the Election Commission website and um, it's been revamped, um, I believe, from the last time that I, I, I went into. So um, that's a good thing. That's another resource that um, uh, is there for everybody, um, including yourself, um, to um, really look into what the Election Commission um, uh, duties and responsibilities are but um i have no questions for you since since it's going to be a a new um, task um, um for you so um i just want to recommend again to use the resources that you have um all the documents that are um in the law and regulations um the team back there also um could could, could really um share information with you um, when you you get in so um i know this committee will try to try its best to fill um the positions of the board and um i know that the the director and their team are are ready and anticipating a very busy election um coming up uh, uh, this november so um, with that said mr chairman um, i yield my time thank you thank you floor leader now i'd like to recognize the Vice President of the Senate, Senator Justo Kidewa from the island of Saipan. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> and good morning, uh, Mr. Speda, and everyone uh, who is in the chamber uh, this morning. Uh, Mr. Speda, I have uh, one question. Uh, when the governor wrote you a letter, uh, nominating you to serve as a member of uh, the Board of Election. What was your response to the governor? Yes, I... Thank you. I, I did receive a letter. I, I read it and I, I was kind of surprised that I know that I'm uh, getting myself into a challenge. Uh, so again, this is all pretty new to me. Uh, I will challenge myself to contribute my knowledge and time to this commission. Okay. Uh, you mentioned earlier in your in your. I really wanted to to know your interest in serving because you know we have confirmed quite a number of uh, uh, appointees. And for me, some I'm very happy, some, a few I'm disappointed uh, because they're, they wanted to serve, but actually their interest is not there. <laughs> and not only that, they don't really know what their role as, a, as an appointee. So that's why I asked this question. Uh, uh, other than preserving the integrity of the Board of Election, and you mentioned that you're new, you're getting into something that 
that is new, other than just to preserve the integrity, what else do you foresee that you would want to do to contribute to the enhancement of providing opportunities to our people to exercise their right to vote in the CNMI? Uh, again, I, I'm going to need the guidance of uh, Mr. Gito and the, the staff uh, to guide me through uh, the right direction to learn these things as much as I can and as fast as possible uh, because of one thing, the election is coming up uh, pretty soon this year and I need to gain those knowledge. As, as since since you're new, and I'm, I'm happy that you, you're being honest to us, <laughs> that uh, this is something new, that you might probably need more, more time to spend to familiarize yourself with your new role as a, a election commissioner. Do you have time to spend uh, additional time with the uh, executive director and some of the members to familiarize yourself with your new role and at the same time serving as a police officer? Do you have the time? I cannot confirm how much percentage of time, but if it requires me, sir, to, to spend time on this, to gain this knowledge, then I think I should. This is for the best interest of the commission and the general public, sir. Okay, so just Marcy, Mr. Speda, I, I will take it from there that uh, you're willing to put extra time outside being you uh, in the meeting with the other commissioners. Time so that you can sit down with the executive director and the employees there so that you can orientate yourself with this new role because board of election is <coughs> is complicated <clears throat> there the laws are complicated that's why every year uh, things will have to be done in accordance to to the law because it's complicated and we mention this every time the, uh, a nominee from for the board of election uh, commission that they really have to go you know get some insights of the, the uh, election law because there's so many things there that you need to to know other than you're going to, what you're going to know when you're in the commission meeting to function effectively in the commission you have to know your role and the executive director and uh, the employees i think uh, are willing and and you willing to learn your new role uh, as a uh, election commissioner. So I'm glad to hear that you're willing to spend whatever time that you, you need outside from your job as a police officer so that you can orientate yourself, yourself with the assistance of the executive director and the staff on your actual role as a commissioner. And I suggest that you do this uh, before commission meeting is called and not when the commission meeting is called and that's when you're going to try to learn what your role in there uh, learn it before that so that when you are called to a commission meeting you are very knowledgeable and you will be an effective uh, commissioner so i'm glad to hear that again you're willing to put extra time to familiarize yourself 
with your new role. And it is different. And I'm glad that you you realize that uh, your job as a police officer is not the same role as the uh, Board of Election Commissioner. So <clears throat> with that, uh, I really thank you for accepting this position or this nomination, knowing and willingly to commit yourself to know more about your role in this new uh, commission and also the very important thing that you said earlier to preserve the integrity of our election. Uh, so just mostly Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Vice President. Now I would like to recognize the Vice Chairman of this committee, Senator Victor Hoku from the island of Rhoda. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, <clears throat> welcome to everyone that is present in this chamber for the public hearing on the nominee to serve as election commission, Mr. Sousa Cepeda. But before I, I move on, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to ask the indulgence of the chair to uh, invite Ms. Kayla Igito to, uh, to sit alongside the nominee as I would like to uh, ensure the guidance also uh, to the new nominee uh, that will be serving soon in the position as the Election Commission Board. Ms. Kayla, thank you. Any objection on that? Uh, Sarge, can you please uh, escort? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Chairman and everyone, members and the listening public, uh, first of all, Mr. Cepeda, I'd like to extend uh, my appreciation to for accepting the uh, appointment uh, made by the governor to serve the third senatorial district as one member for the election commission uh, you have already made statement that uh, this is fairly new responsibility uh, to you but i'm very confident that with your 26 years experience in the uh, DPS, I am certain that any decision regarding this, uh, this new endeavor of responsibility, you will be seriously considering to do the right thing and the right way. And I know that you have that heart to execute to the best of your knowledge to assist the other members as well as the executive director and the uh, agency in itself, the commission. But I'm pretty sure that you'll be needing also time and time again, the assistance of the executive director to uh, ensure the, the uh, critical responsibility of the commission. And I just want, for the record, to 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 uh, ask you what's your uh, <clears throat> as Senator Jake already asked you, uh, ask the question of your time to make available during the uh, call of the commission uh, meeting and 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 other subcommittee meetings, and you have make that answer that you will try your very best to ensure that you will have that time and <clears throat> i just want to find out how long i mean what's your present rank with dps uh, mr spinner uh, currently i'm a uh, police lieutenant sir okay so with that position i'm pretty much confident that you will make time to attend the call of the uh, election commission whenever there is a need for the board to meet and discuss uh, agenda of the 
uh, election commission, particularly if there is new set of agendas that will be uh, determined and considered uh, on the impending uh, uh, election year, uh, this fiscal, I mean, this year election. And one thing I'd like to make this uh, known, uh, and I hope that with the assistance of the executive director and you as a concern from this committee, a member of this committee, I would like you to seriously discuss the issue when you attend a board meeting with respect to absentee ballots, request for absentee. I want actually the commission to seriously look into it the residency, continuous residency requirement, and domiciliary, whether those people will be given continuous rights to vote when they have abandoned their domiciliary and residency in the CNMI. And I'd like the executive director as well to note that and make that a discussion in any of the commission meeting. It's very unfair and you have all experience that in the past election, the people that are staying and experiencing the difficulties on the respective senatorial and exercise their rights to vote for the person that they want, they, that they want to be represented with are being over vote by people residing outside the Commonwealth that have never ex expressed any interest of their return. These absentee voters have been receiving all kinds of federal assistance and whatever state they are, they have been receiving benefits from that particular state. And for anyone to overturn an election result by the people on every respective senatorial district, by a residence that is, that is voting to overturn this election, in my opinion, is very unfair, and it is not a right direction, and then I, it's not a right policy. So I want the director of the CAC and the other board commission members to seriously look and make determination between the residency, continuous residency requirement to vote and the domiciliary of these individuals that are being made eligible to vote. So I, I, want, I want you, Mr. Cepeda, with the assistance of the executive director, to make this part of your agenda a discussion and we would like to hear it from the board or from the election commission members when it is uh, uh, when when the commission is in full quorum to to discuss the election uh, uh, the election uh, uh, process uh, moving forward for this general election. And I, I understand uh, also. Mr. Cepeda, and this is going to be, a, this is all that I'm saying is your assignment as a new beginning, as a new beginner in this field and responsibility. So I need you to, to seriously look into those issues and you may probably need the, the uh, recommendation or or protocols from the executive director of how you can put this together during your uh, call of the meeting. And uh, to uh, the executive director at this point in time, do you have a quorum with the election commission? We do. So you have five members yes. from Saipan, sitting members already? Oh no, we only have two. You have only two today? No, two from Saipan, and then we have one from Tinian and two from Moda. Is so, that what you you mean? Yeah, so what's the total commission composition? Nine. So 
total from the third senatorial is three um, members. Five. Five for Saipan. Okay, for the third senatorial district, how many are still serving? Two. Only two. Yes. So we need we three need more. to have five members, uh, three more additional members for Saipan. Yes. When Mr. Cepeda is confirmed, that will provide this third senatorial with three yes. confirmed seating uh, uh, commission. Yes, sir. So we need additional two. Two more. Okay. And for the island of uh, Tinian, we have one sitting member and one vacant. So, but they still need one more. Yes, sir. From the island of Tinian. Yes, sir. And for Rhoda, uh, we we still have two. So, with two, three, four, and five yes. constitute a quorum. Yes, sir. So when the when the commission call for a meeting, does it necessarily uh, the meeting? Uh, is necessarily to have its member on on every senatorial district before a meeting is conducted yes sir and in the absence of one senatorial district attending the call of the commission meeting would the meeting proceed no it would not quorum okay okay thank you with that information uh, director but uh, my my really my my real concern here today uh, Mr. Cepeda is, and, and perhaps with the other uh, appointee that will come soon before the Senate uh, for, for action, I would like you also and, and the director to uh, seriously look into what I just make mention about this absentee. There are people that I knew being allowed to vote when they have never been in the CNMI, never, not even once, but they were allowed to vote. And, you know, this is a very serious situation that our people are experiencing here. And I think the commission uh, Mr. Cepeda, member, uh, since you'll be making the the call of decision, with, of course, the experience that uh, in the past that the uh, executive director have seen, but I've never been taken into consideration of whatever she lays on the table to make those changes. I would like this election year that you and other board uh, election commission members will seriously look into this uh, process so that that's where we can see that the people that exercise their voting rights in the particular senatorial district speak loudly and not those people that are staying outside the commonwealth to override those people decisions that are experiencing the difficulty and a day-to-day -day situation on the respective senatorial. And let me just say this, for those people that are being given the rights to continue to vote outside the CNMI, they are not suffering. They are not suffering like the people that are staying here and, and voting for change. So I like Thank you, members. Uh, like you, uh, Mr. Cepeda and the executive director, again, I will reiterate to seriously consider this into, in putting it into your agenda. And we would like to hear what is there to be discussed on your next uh, board uh, election commission board no discussion. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cepeda and Kayla. Thank you for your time. And um, I hope that you will provide a proper guidance being an executive director to a fairly new uh, uh, commission uh, uh, board appointees that will be serving soon in a full board capacity. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I you for now. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair. And uh, again, uh, thank you, uh, 
a sec, uh, executive director for your patient and understanding for being I know that you're not the one that is been uh, appointed, but uh, it is very necessary that you you sit uh, next to the uh, the newly appointed uh, individual for this capacity because of uh, the knowledge that you have at the election commission. <clears throat> My concern is uh, this is not the the only uh, uh, appointment that's been sent to the Senate that we. We wish that the members uh, participate so we can hear from them because especially this is an election year and it is very sensitive and critical that uh, we want to make sure that that is fair and the general public also being afforded uh, to hear uh, what they have to say uh, like what was mentioned by my colleagues so it's very those are very important uh, concern and I, I wish that uh, in the near future, uh, I don't know whether they acknowledge this, uh, that there is a hearing uh, happening today, or they acknowledge the appointment of uh, Mr. Sepeda so that they can perhaps uh, give an input uh, or perhaps give guidance to the new appointee whether what is the, you know, the responsibility of his, uh, I, I don't know whether because based on his testimony, he's just new and he would like to, you know, to just uh, do his, uh, if he's uh, approved, do his uh, job diligently as what he's doing as a law enforcement, uh, making, uh, you know, the the, the services to the public are fair and uh, with integrity. Uh, but I'm very concerned because this is a very sensitive matter that uh, requires some of the if not all but some of the, mem the members to at least participate and see their, their uh, to hear their concern uh, whether the the pointy is a uh, you know they have issue with them or because we don't want we don't want the individual to 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 go into that new responsibility and then there's no uh, you know uh, they can't work with with the other members we want them uh, to to sit down and, and work with the other members, uh, especially those uh, long time sitting members. With, of course, with the secretary and the staff, so we can uh, you know address uh, some of the the concern from the general public and also the concern of the Senate. And uh, I myself also receiving calls from of Ireland, and uh, and I'm wishing that those concerns are are being addressed because I. I was informed that they also uh, raised their concern to the office of uh, absentees, uh, absentee ballots, and not been able to be to receive on time uh, for whatever reason. But uh, I think this is very important that uh, that I continue to to emphasize and uh, encourage uh, members to uh, you know to participate. I know this is not a full time job, but uh, this is this is a very sensitive and especially. Uh, during an election year, we don't want the general public to feel that it's not fair or or there's no fairness in there or whatever. I want to make sure that uh, everyone understands that this is a very sensitive and serious uh, appointment that we that the Senate uh, needs to address, especially uh, absent the quorum. We we have to entertain uh, uh, this uh, appointment. So again, I in the future if. Uh, you receive from our office the well you receive the the letter from the administration appointing an individual to to serve in that capacity i, I wish that the other members should be informed and uh, and i know some of their information are are confidential uh, you don't have to show them the confidentiality of it or whatever information that is confidential and not supposed to be shared but at least at least the uh, if you get the the approval of the appointee, if the resume can be shared with the other members so that they can acknowledge who's coming in and whether or not that individual can fit to serve with them. So again, I, I, I ask for your your patience and understanding on this matter. And for you, uh, Mr. Cepeda, I, I know that you are committed and are determined to serve in this capacity. Otherwise, you won't be sitting right in front of us, uh, you know, uh, presenting your testimony uh, that you have the 
the willingness and the, the determination to to sit in this guy and to serve in this capacity. And uh, I know that usually when when it comes to new appoint, appointee, we don't really raise some questions because you're just coming in. But in this regards, it's very critical and very sensitive that we we need to know from you how you you will react on on the appointment that are that are that you are appointed to to serve in this capacity so if this body give you the uh, the blessing to serve i ask that you sit down with the sitting member and especially to the ceo and the staff that are overseeing the operation on a daily basis uh, you know work with them and see if there's anything that needs to be improved uh, you know uh, share with your with the director and the other members I don't have any question to to question you at this time. This time, I'd like to recognize the vice chairman. Okay. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Again, one question no, uh, to the executive director for clarification, uh, Ms. Igedo. The uh, what is your present requirements to, uh, to uh, qualify to run for public office, like the office of the mayor, office of the representative, House of Representative, and the Senate, when an individual does not have a continuous residency in the CNMI? Are you talking about the candidate that plans to run for yes. mayor? Yes, yes. So if um, there's a question in the residency, um, we would present that to the board, and the board would look into it and ask us to provide or uh, we would call the candidate in as well and um, they would be able to present their evidence that they do meet the requirements okay so to, to simplify that let me let me just say if i'm staying somewhere in the united states but i'm voting in the cnmi and i decided to run for the office of the mayor how long would it take me as a voter, okay, that have been exercising my voting rights every election, but I'm staying in the United States, but then I decide to come over and seek public office? What time period do I need? Or do you have that in the regulation of the time that you will seek public office to 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 uh, being being a registered voter and have been vote, exercising your voting rights to vote but you're not staying in the cnmi currently senator we don't have that in our in our election law or regulation regarding um the individual needs to be living in that um it's just that you need to be, oh yes it does but you need to meet the residency okay. requirement of five years for what five years for what it, depending on what seat what, so, what seat is yeah. what i'm saying yeah mayor or mayor is for five years yes and then you have that age that you need to meet yes then, yes I, i'm only concerned about the rest of the continuous residency yes, to run yes so for the office of the mayor yes you need five years continuous resident in order for you to qualify to run for that office. Yes, sir. Okay. For the Congress, okay. how many years do you need for continuous resident in order for you to run for that office? Three years. And for the Senate, same? Five. So the mayor and the Senate seat requires five years continuous resident for you to seek that office. Yes. And for the House of Representatives, it's only two years. Three. Or oh, three years. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Kayla. You have answered my concern. You're welcome. Are you back, yeah, Mr. Chairman? Thank you, Vice. Any other member? No. Thank you. Uh, there's no more questions and concerns uh, by this body. So, uh, Director, you excuse. Thank you. At this time, all public comments are well taken. Let the record reflect that the oral testimonies received today 
will be included in the Senate Standing Committee recommendation report and will be forwarded before the full Senate members in consideration for confirmation or rejection. And at this time, before we adjourn, I would like to extend on behalf of the members of this committee our sincere appreci appreciation and gratitude to Mr. Tom Manglonia, the governor's uh, representative, the appointee, Mr. Jesus S. Cepeda, and more especially the members of the general public for your participation and involvement during this important public hearing process. And we certainly hope that we continue this dialogue of communication between us, the elected officials and the public to keep you abreast and informed of our current and future Senate hearings ahead that relates to the public best interest. This concludes our hearing this morning. Do I hear a motion for adjournment? So moved. There's a motion on what's seconded for adjournment. One favor the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carries this public hearing this morning is officially adjourned. Thank you.